Across the country, people are weighing in about the Supreme Court ruling on money and politics. The court struck down the limit on campaign contributions. Which is raising new questions about the influence of millionaires and billionaires in the race for Congress and the White House. Brian Ross has more on the political big spenders. The real campaign in American politics begins long before and far away from the confetti and balloons and speeches. The real campaign for both parties takes place at fancy dinners and luxury yachts. What's your name, sir? Huh? I can't I don't say know. your name? No. Where the super rich decide which politicians get their money and therefore who has a chance to be elected. It's absolutely about the money. And without it? Without it, you're pretty much dead in the water. With this week's Supreme Court ruling, finding spending limits invalid, rich donors can now give the maximum amount to every single candidate for Congress, leaving average Americans on the sidelines. Your voice is going to be completely drowned out by these massive contributions from just a few wealthy, interested parties. Indeed, a handful of billionaires from Las Vegas to Wall Street have emerged as the country's backroom power brokers. On the Republican side, there's already been a parade of potential presidential candidates to see casino owner Sheldon Adelson, who says he's again prepared to spend about $100 million if he can find the right candidate. And the secret of David Koch, along with his brother Charles, are also good for close to $100 million for candidates who they say support core American values. ABC News, Mr. Koch. Democrats portray the Kochs as evil. These two men are a pair of shadow billionaires spending millions of dollars to rig our political system. But the Democrats have their own big money figures. California billionaire and environmental activist Tom Steyer has put out the word he too will put up about $100 million for the coming election cycle. And the son of billionaire George Soros, Jonathan, is promising to use his own money in access, ironically, to push for reforms that would undercut the role of big money in access in politics. Are you using the system like those who are often criticized for it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to uh, pretend that we're not. Soros was the only one of the big money players to agree to appear in our report. Of course, he's the one trying to end a system that he and many Republicans and Democrats agree has made American politics a private playground for the rich. Brian Ross, ABC News, New York.